Hey there! Today we will teach you in details about porosity. This document is done by Keo Tran and Drayton Wiggins, narrated by Clint Martin. What is porosity? By definition, porosity is the percentage of pore volume or void space within a rock. The measurement of the total void space within a rock, whether or not it contributes to flow, is called the total porosity. The measurement of the interconnected pore volume or void space in a rock that contributes to flow in a reservoir is called effective porosity. The effective porosity will always be less than the total porosity. Porosity is denoted by the symbol phi, and the general equation used to calculate porosity is the volume of the pores divided by the volume of the bulk or in terms of grain and bulk volume, the equation is 1 minus volume of the grain over volume of the bulk. The manner in which the grains are sorted will have a direct effect on the porosity. The three most common ideal packings are simple cubic, body-centered cubic, and face-centered cubic. Although none of these types of sorting will be seen in an actual reservoir, it is important to understand the concepts behind how the porosity is affected by the different types of packing. Taking a look at the most simple packing model, a standard cubic packing, we will show how the porosity is derived. Using the letter A to represent the unit width of the cube or bulk, and using R for the radius of each atom, we are able to construct an equation for porosity. First, it is important to get an equation for the side of the bulk volume, A, in terms of the radius. For simple cubic, A is equal to 2R, which will give the bulk volume 8R cubed. Finding the volume of the grains is done by using the equation of a sphere multiplied by the number of segments that are one eighth of a sphere, as shown. Then we will substitute the grain and bulk volume into the general equation which give us a porosity of 0.476. Looking at a face-centered packing, we use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for side A in terms of the radius. We then substitute that value for A into the bulk volume equation. Finding the volume of the grains is similar to simple cubic, except we now have additional six halves of a sphere. Substituting both the grain and bulk volumes into the general equation, we arrive at a porosity of 0.26. The last sorting structure we will look at is the body-centered packing, where there is a solid atom in the middle in contact to each section at the edge of the cube. Finding the value for A in terms of the radius is a bit more tricky here, because the spheres are in contact with each other from one point of the cube to a diagonal opposite point as shown in the figure. We know the length of the diagonal is 4R and the bottom diagonal is found using the Pythagorean theorem for both sides A. We then use all these together with the Pythagorean theorem again giving us an equation for side A in terms of the radius. Using the previous method we find the volume of the bulk and grain and place into the general equation, giving a porosity of 0.32. Another factor that plays an important role in the porosity is the angularity of the grains. We saw the ideal packing models were all spheres, which gives the highest values of porosity. As the grains become more angular, the space between the rocks decreases, giving lower values for porosity. The effect of sorting also determines the value of porosity of the formation. If the grains are all relatively equal in size and sphericity, the formation will have a high degree in the level of sorting, which will give a higher value of porosity. Formations with grains that are varying in size and shape will be more poorly sorted, giving lower values for porosity. We are now going to work through a porosity example problem. Calculate the porosity of the sample described below. So how exactly would we start a problem like this? 
First, you need to gather all the given information and organize with the general equations. We have the mass of the grains equal to 104.1 grams. The mass of the bulk in air is equal to the mass of the grains plus mass of the interlocked fluid which is equal to 120.2 grams. The mass of the bulk when submerged in water is equal to 64.7 grams. This is because of the buoyant force of the fluid pushing up on the bulk. We know that the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. We now calculate the mass of the fluid in the pores by taking the mass of the saturated core minus the mass of the dry core, giving us a mass of 16.1 grams. Substituting these values back into the general buoyancy equation, we have the mass of the grain plus the mass of the fluid in the pores minus the weight of the displaced fluid, which is the volume of the grains plus the volume of the pores times the density of the fluid. This is set equal to the mass of the submerged core at 64.7 grams. Substituting the given values into the buoyancy equation, we are able to calculate the mass of the fluid in terms of the volume of the grains which is equal to 39.4 grams. Using the general porosity equation with the addition of the fluid density term, we know that the mass of the fluid in terms of the volume of the grain as well as the mass of the fluid in terms of the volume of the pores. From here we just place these into the general equation and arrive at a porosity value of 0.29. A test of various core samples were examined from different formations and their porosities were recorded. Displayed on the figure is the distribution of these porosities based on the lithology of the rock. It can be seen that the sandstone formations display higher values of porosity ranging from 0.1 to 0.3. Looking back at our example problem, we can assume that our sample core with a porosity of 0.29 is from a sandstone formation. Let's have a recap on the concepts of porosity. We know that porosity is the measure of the free space within a rock, with the effective porosity being the pores that are interconnected allowing fluid to flow through. The porosity is independent of grain size as seen from the cubic packing derivations where the final equation is not dependent on the radius of the atom. The porosity is dependent on the shape and sorting of the grains, with high sphericity and well-sorted formations having high porosity, and angular, poorly sorted formations having lower porosity.